Welcome back, Seth Bling here. Today we continue my quest to create a 360 card custom Mario themed Magic the Gathering draft cube. If you missed the first video on this, you should go check it out. It explains what the whole project's about. There's a link in the video description. Today we're gonna to be talking about a couple different things. We're gonna be talking about a bunch of spook cards in the sort of ghost house part of the set. We're gonna be talking about the sacrifice sub theme in black red, uh, the black and red colors. Let's start off with Artistic Obsession. This is a very efficient card, but it does cost three colors worth of mana. So it's a sorcery, exile a card from your hand, the top card of your library, and a card in your graveyard, and a face down pile. So you get three cards in a face down pile. Shuffle that pile and put those cards onto the battlefield face down. They're two tier creatures. So this card creates three two two creatures. It does that does cost you another like an extra card from your hand. So it's sort of like costs you two cards from your hand, um, and you have to have a creature in your graveyard in order to get one of those creatures. Or not a creature in your graveyard. You'd have to have a card in your graveyard to get one of those creatures. Um, but it does give you six power and toughness worth of creatures for four mana and two cards. Uh, it creates two two creatures, and it doesn't give you any way to turn those two two creatures face up or anything. But, of course, Spook is one of the main mechanics of this set. And it's very synergistic with Spook, as we'll see in a moment. You can get some uh, cards face down that have Spook, and when they die, you'll get extra value out of those cards. So not only is it six power and toughness, but you get extra value when those creatures die if you have a bunch of Spook cards in your deck. So for instance, Sealing Surprise is a card with Spook. Uh, it's an instant, deals three damage to any target for three mana, uh, which is not really that efficient. But if you, uh, it's got Spook. So Spook says you may cast this card face down as a 2-2 creature for 3. When this creature dies while face down, exile it. You may cast it later from exile for its spook cost. This is sort of, this mechanic is sort of a combination of adventures and morph. So you play it face down as a 2-2 for 3. There's no way to turn it face up while it's on the battlefield. Not any built in any way anyway. Once it dies though, it sort of becomes an adventure or like it's like you went on an adventure and then you can play the card for a reduced cost. So uh, in this case, it, when it, you play it face down and then it dies, it becomes Lightning Bolt, right? It's an instant for one red mana that deals three damage to any target. So Lightning Bolt, a really iconic red card, maybe the most iconic red card. And so very efficient once you can do that. Like I said, very synergistic with Artistic Obsession. You can get back a copy of Ceiling Surprise you've already played, or you can play a, a secret one face down from your hand. Maybe you get lucky and you get it off the top of your library, but anyway, very nice card. Uh, very good in if you're heavy on spook. Uh, capture on canvas is a sorcery. Target non-land, sorry, turn target non-land permanent face down. This becomes a two-two creature. So again, there's it's there's no built-in way to turn that permanent face up. Uh, you can cast this on your own card with spook if you really want to like get it into exile and cast it again. But the main use is just get rid of something that the opponent has that's important. Any non-land permanent, you can sort of get rid of its abilities. It'll still be a 2-2 creature, so there'll, there'll still be some value there. And if they can have it die and then bring it back or something some other way, then uh, they might be able to get value out of it there. But uh, four mana for that ability is kind of expensive, but it has the spook ability, so you can get it at a very nice rate if you can have the creature die. Uh, or you play it as a morph or a face down creature and then have that creature die. All right, Haunted Chest. This is actually, it's got Spook, but this is actually more targeted at Architect. Um, so Haunted Chest for two and a blue, uh, four tap, draw a card, and create a treasure token. So kind of an expensive ability, um, but it does actually pay for one of its own mana by giving you a treasure token that you can save for future turns. Um, this is very nice for Architect decks in that you can play it face down as a creature, or you can play it face up as an artifact, or you can kind of get both out of it. Um, it's also good in Spook decks. This also gives you some, um, oh, like a mana sink. If, you, if the game goes long and you just like have extra mana, you can uh, you can dump all that mana into something very useful. So pretty nice. Um, Bruiser. So this is a ghost that actually appears in I think New Super Mario Brothers games. Uh, whenever so this is a two two for blue and a black. So same stats as a as a face down card, but costs one less. So pretty efficient if you cast it face up. Whenever a creature you control with power two becomes tapped, each opponent loses one life. It's got spook. Uh, you don't get it at a reduced cost if you spook it. 
um, but you can get some extra value out of it. Or you, if you like put it into your hand face down with artistic obsession, you know, you get that value, that sort of stuff. This is uh, this card is here to highlight the power two theme of blue and black. So blue and black has, of course, a bunch of spook cards. It also has a bunch of vehicles with crew two. This is something I intentionally did to create the overlap between vehicles and spook, which are the two themes of the set that share the colors blue and black. Um, and this sort of explicitly tells you, hey, there's a there's a theme, which is power two. Um, and specifically power two creatures becoming tapped to crew vehicles is a, very much a theme of the set. They're, they could just be coming, be uh, t getting tapped in order to attack. But this lets you play a lot of creatures with power two, either spook creatures or other creatures, and then, and then uh, you know, cause your opponent to lose life in a way that they can't block. So uh, this highlights the theme and it's actually pretty powerful alongside a bunch of creatures with power two and vehicles that have crew two. So. I hope this will, you know, make people realize that that's a theme in this set. Ghost Writing. Uh, this is sort of a generic card that just, I wanted to have some card with Spook that drew you cards in blue, and this is that card. So it's a, you know, play on Ghost Writer, which is a real life concept. Um, so you get to read some books. They're ghostly books. It's got Spook, so you can play it for reduced cost. Nothing too complicated about this card. So I guess I'll move on. <laughs> Red Boo, uh, this is actually a mirror to Boo. So they're both two ones. Uh, Boo is a blue creature that's a two one. It has flying and it can't attack if an opponent controls an untapped creature. This one can't block if an opponent controls an untapped creature. They also both have spook for a single black mana. Um, so uh, Red Boo can always attack though. So he's actually pretty good in like a red green aggro deck as just like a two one for one that uh, can just attack in. Um, but uh, could definitely have some value in a heavy spook deck. Boulette. This is a powerful card. It's, an, it's a sort of a version of Wheel of Fortune. Wizards of the Coast has printed a lot of these kinds of cards that like cost five mana for Wheel of Fortune, but have some other way to cast them that uh, you get a discount and it becomes two and a red, which is the cost of Wheel of Fortune. Each player discards their hand and draws seven cards. So, um, yeah. Oh, by the way, Red Boo, Red Boo and Boo are both two ones. Boo used to be a two two, but I changed it to a two one so that Red Boo and Boo would match. And I think this is a more balanced card. Anyway, yeah. So, so this is a, a version of Wheel of Fortune. Each player discards their hand and draws seven cards. So, like a very powerful effect under certain circumstances. So, like if you're able to play a lot of cards out from your hand. Um, quickly then you can you know drain your hand of cards faster than your opponent and you'll be able to get a lot more value out of discarding your hand and drawing seven cards um, the next card i'm going to show you will combo with this very well uh, this also combos really well with spawn which is a mechanic in the set that lets you um, pay one and exile a card from your hand and then play the card later for its full cost um, so you're, you can dump all these cards very quickly from your hand that have spawn and then use boulette um, but yeah, the next card I'm going to show you combos with this very well. It's called Antasma Dream Drinker. I don't even remember what game this is from. Somebody suggested it, though. Uh, Nezfluka just suggested this, I think, uh, on the subreddit. Or maybe on stream. Anyway, uh, he's got flash and flying. Each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. So again, we see this blue-black power two theme. Um, but this combos really well with Boulette, because you play this card and you play Boulette, uh, you know, each player discards their hand and draws seven cards, except your opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. So they're going to draw one card. You're going to draw seven cards. <laughs> I think you can see how that's sort of one-sided, right? So this is a very powerful combo. Uh, I expect to see this played quite a bit in draft. But otherwise, this still, like, you can play this in response to your opponent's cool draw spell, your opponent's cool draw spell, and prevent them from drawing a bunch of cards. Uh, it's a very good surprise against a few cards that, you know, draw extra cards. Professor E. Gad is one of the more important cards, like, flavor-wise for, uh, for the Ghost House theme. Um, he is one of the main characters of Luigi's Mansion. He's the inventor of the Poltergust, which is this vacuum cleaner that can suck up ghosts. So I wanted him to be both good with and against ghosts, because I thought it made sense that way. He also does a lot of experiments with ghosts. So 
You may look at face down creatures you don't control. This is him being good against ghosts. Also, uh, tap, destroy target face down creature. Its controller draws a card. So this is actually a really flexible ability. So first of all, if your opponent is, is playing face down creatures, you can look at them, decide which ones are powerful, which ones aren't powerful. Uh, he sort of like lets you, you know, sp playing against Spook is often a game of like, oh, why do these cre like face down creatures in front of me? Like, what are they doing? Which ones can I afford to kill? Which ones can't I? And so he lets you cheat in that respect. But also, you can target your own creatures, and that can be very powerful. You can cast Artistic Obsession and, you know, play a card face down, or just play a card face down through whatever means. Something like uh, Sealing Surprise. You can play this face down as a 2-2 for 3, and then have Pro Pro Professor E. Gad kill it. You get to draw an extra card, and then, like, Sealing Surprise, if you played it for 3, and then you spend a red mana, costs only one more than just casting it normally. So by paying one extra mana, you get to draw a card, um, and you get some flexibility about when you actually want to kill it and stuff. So this is a really, really powerful card. We did some playtesting with it. A uh, really powerful card with spook cards. Um, it also can do some cool things like with Capture on Canvas, you can turn your opponent's card face down and then use Professor Egad to kill that if you want to clear away their 2-2 creature. They, they do get to draw a card if you do that. And in playtesting, we actually saw that happen too, and it was pretty powerful. All right, so next up I'm going to talk about the sacrifice theme that's in black and red in this set. And I've designed a few cards for this to make it um, more powerful and, and more of a theme. Uh, King Babam is perhaps the most powerful card I've designed for the Sacrifice theme. This is an uh, enemy from Super Mario 64, uh, and I've decided that Babams in the set will do something when you sacrifice them, not when they die, specifically when you sacrifice them. So it costs 3 and a black for a 3-3. Three, three. That's like a hill giant. That's not that great. But, and it's also got spawn. So this is that uh, mechanic that I was saying was really good alongside uh, Boulette, because you can empty your hand very quickly without losing cards. When you sacrifice King Babam, it deals three damage to target player and you draw three cards. So this is a huge effect. Um, when you sacrifice it, uh, you're probably getting some other benefit out of sacrificing it. Um, but you're also just like drawing three cards and dealing three damage. So it sort of like gives you a quest to complete when you draft this card. You've got to find some way to sacrifice it. And uh, hopefully some way to sacrifice it that gives you some like nice benefits. And we'll get to some of those cards in this in later in the video that'll uh, do exactly that. But let's look at some more Babam themed cards. Here's Babam itself. It's a two one for two. When you sacrifice Babam, uh, you choose one. Either Babam deals three damage to target creature, or you destroy target artifact. Uh, this choice is the exact choice that appears on a card called uh, a Braid, which also costs one and a red. So this acts as a two one for a little while, um, but if you have a way to sacrifice it, you can get whatever benefit you get from sacrificing it, and you also get to cast the abrade ability. Um, let's look at a card that enables sacrifice effects in a really nice way. So here's Babam Cannon. Uh, Babam Cannon, you like load a creature into the cannon and fire it off, and it explodes in your opponent's creature. So at the beginning of your combat in your turn, you may pay one in a black and sacrifice a creature. When you do, target creature gets minus two minus two until end of turn. So if you want to load Babam into the Babam Cannon, uh, not only do you get to give a creature minus two, minus two, but you also get to cast this Abrade effect. Or if you get to load King Babam into your Babam Cannon, yeah, you give a creature minus two, minus two, and you deal three damage to that player, and you draw three cards. Like a really powerful combination of effects. Um, can really deal a lot of damage to your opponent's board or give you a lot of card advantage. Babam Cannon's a really nice repeatable sacrifice outlet. Bouldergeist, another really nice repeatable sacrifice. Oh wait, no, that's right, I changed what Bouldergeist is. So this is a new card. Bouldergeist used to do something else. Uh, now Bouldergeist has this really unique effect. Whenever you sacrifice a creature for the first time each turn, up to one target land you control becomes a 3-3 elemental creature with haste until end of turn. It's, just, it's still a land. So Bouldergeist is a boss from Mario Galaxy. He throws boulders at you. <laughs> um, so, and he's got... Uh, bomb or boo bomb bomb boos anyway uh that you have to like throw at him to damage him but so this basically the idea here is that when you're sacrificing creatures you're letting him throw a boulder and a boulder in this case is a land becoming a 3-3 creature that can attack or block um yeah it's a pretty unique effect sacrificing a creature for the first time each turn is something i don't think that has ever appeared on a magic card and uh having that like create 
both a 3-3 creature that you can attack with or block with, and also another creature that you can sacrifice to a lot of these effects is uh, is pretty nice. And it's got spawn, so you create a little 1-1 uh, that you can also sacrifice to another effect, so it gives you something to sacrifice. Spawn is really nice alongside a lot of these cards. Here's another card with spawn, Larry Koopa, one of the Koopa kids. Whenever you sacrifice a creature, Larry Koopa deals one damage to any target. So he uses his rod to cast a you know little fireball or something like that whenever you sacrifice a creature. Again, just a really nice 4-3 four, for 4 um, sacrifice synergy card. Next up is Endless Pit. Uh, this is, you know, that there's these appear all over the world of Mario. Pits that you fall into, there's no bottom to them. I couldn't call it Bottomless Pit because that's actually already a magic card. But uh, So I had to call it Endless Pit. I might still change it to some other name. But uh, each player sacrifices a creature. So there's this Goomba, uh, which you're... So <laughs> I like this art. <laughs> um, it's got the spawn ability. I haven't actually said what it does in this video, so let me read it. One and, sac and, one and exile this card from your hand. Create a 1-1 one, one black minion creature token. You may cast this card later from exile. Spawn only as a sorcery. So this is like an adventure from Eldraine, uh, but the only thing it can do is create a 1-1 one, one token. But then you can cast this card later. So there's a couple ways to play this card. One is that you spawn, making this Goomba that's in the picture, and then each, each player sort of falls in the pit with one of their creatures. The Goomba falls into the pit, and your opponent's creature falls into the pit. You can also just cast this on turn two if your opponent has played a creature and you haven't played any creatures. Then you don't have to sacrifice a creature since you don't have any, but your opponent still has to sacrifice a creature. So you can still cause your opponent to sacrifice whatever their first creature is. You can also just play this alongside, like, King bob -omb. You know, force your opponent to sacrifice a creature, but you also get to get to sacrifice, you know, King bob or or just bob or whatever. So there's a very flexible card. Um, yeah, and then you, yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> a lot of ways to play it. And then finally, last card for the video, another Sacrifice Synergy card, Bone Tail. So this is a 5-5 five, five Flyer for 5. That's already a really efficient card. It's got Spawn, so it creates a 1-1 one, one minion if you want it to. Um, sacrifice 3 creatures, return Bone Tail from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate this ability only to tame, you can cast a Sorcery. So at Sorcery speed, you can sacrifice 3 creatures. Of course, Spawn Tail kind of creates 1 uh, for it, for that effect. So you need two other creatures to sacrifice, but it's not too hard if you're, you know, spawning with a bunch of your cards. So not only is it a 5-5 five, five flyer for 5, but you can get it back. This card is very bomby. <laughs> it's a really, really strong card. Um, and, a good, and a good enabler for sacrificing things, which could definitely be useful in this set. Whew. All right, that was a lot of cards to go through. We have two more videos over the next couple days that I'm about to record. And then you'll see them over the next couple days about... Uh, villains and also super uh, creatures the heroes of the set um, so stay tuned for those if you're interested in you know participating in the set uh con set construction set design check out my twitch stream twitch.tv slash sethbling or if you want to go on twitter twitter.com slash sethbling i always tweet when i go live also you can check out reddit.com slash r slash mario the gathering and there's a subreddit there where a lot of people are suggesting cards and discussing the set and all sorts of stuff like that and so there's various ways to get involved in the set and both playtesting and card design, all that. If you want to draft alongside me, that's where you do it. So, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching.